All right, so let's see if you have the math skills to figure out how to solve this word problem, which is the following. Ron has $2.20 in dimes and quarters. He has three times as many dimes as quarters. How many dimes does he have? All right, so this is the problem, but we do have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is two, B is five, C is six, and D is 12. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct solution in just one second. But uh, before I do, let's take one more look at the problem. All right, so Ron has $2.20 in dimes and quarters. He has three times as many dimes as quarters. How many dimes does he have? All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer is D, 12 dimes. All right, now, if you got this right, you're going to get all of this, an A+, plus, a 100%, a happy face, and a certificate of excellence for your ability to solve a math word problem. Okay, now, I'm going to be using algebra to solve this problem, and I didn't want to say uh, solve the algebra word problem because a lot of people are like algebra word problems I hate those things so if you solved this uh, using another way that is fantastic but the algebra is an easy tool that we can use to solve this uh, problem and uh, this is not going to not going to be all that difficult all right so let's go ahead and get started right now so the first step in solving any math word problem is to make sure you fully understand the question. And the best way of doing that is to read a problem at least three times. Make sure you read and reread a problem to get all that information that is involved in the problem, and then uh, make sure you understand the specific question. All right, so once again, Ron has $2.20 in dimes and quarters. He has three times as many dimes as quarters. So let's just kind of think about this here for a second. Does he have more dimes or more quarters? Well, he has more dimes, right? Specifically, he has three times as many dimes as quarters. So in other words, if he has uh, two quarters, he has six dimes, right? So two times three, of course, is six. So the question is, how many dimes does he have? Now, let's suppose you're like, hey, Mr. D2 Math Man, I don't even know where to start here. Well, if you still have to take uh, math exams and you have a multiple choice uh, question, well, never ever leave a blank, just take a guess. But uh, in this situation, we can actually figure out the right answer by uh, going through our options and just kind of seeing what makes sense. So when you do take a guess on a multiple choice question, try to eliminate or use the, uh, eliminate wrong answers or obvious wrong answers or use the answers uh, to figure out the correct uh, solution. And in this case, we can't. So let's suppose uh, we think C is the right answer. Okay, so again, how many dimes does Ron have? Well, if the answer is six, he has six dimes, right? So again, he has uh, three times as many dimes as quarters. So that means he has two quarters, right? So if he has uh, six dimes, he has two quarters because he has three times as many dimes as quarters, right? So two times three is six. But let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the value of six dimes and two quarters. So six dimes is 60 cents, right? So 60 cents and two quarters is 50 cents. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, US currency, I'm gonna review this in just one second, but the 60 cents and 50 cents is not $2.20. So this cannot be the correct solution. So you can just kind of go through these uh, answers until you get the correct answer, which of course is 12. All right, so again, anytime you have a multiple choice question in math, try to use the answers to figure out the right solution. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a quick review for those of you that are not familiar with uh, U.S. currency in terms of uh, coins and bills. Matter of fact, uh, let's, just, let's make sure you understand what a dime, quarter, a nickel, and a penny is. All right, now for those of you that are not familiar 
with US currency, let's just do a quick review of the value of coins. So of course, uh, all currencies uh, for the most part have coins and bills. So in the US, we have uh, these little paper things called bills. And the first uh, bill that we have is $1 bill. Now, uh, this is a bill, right? So this is actually paper money. But uh, those little round things that we put in our pocket that are money are called coins. So we have four types of coins in the US. We have the quarter, dime, nickel, and penny. All right, so the value of $1 is 100 cents. Okay, 100 cents. So a penny is worth one cent. So if you have 100 pennies, well, you have the same thing as $1. Now a nickel is worth five cents. A dime is worth uh, 10 cents. And a quarter is worth 25 cents. Now, when it comes to math problems in, uh, involving uh, coins or involving money, uh, i.e. Uh, dollars and cents, we need to think about the value of these coins in terms of a dollar. So let's go ahead and talk about that right now. So for example, a quarter is worth 25 cents. But uh, when we think about how much of a dollar a quarter is worth, well, we want to express this as a fraction. So this would be 25 out of 100. Okay, so $1 again is 100 cents and one quarter is 25 cents. So now we have a fraction 25 over 100 and this is the same thing as 0.25. Okay, so a quarter is worth, okay, or 25 cents is worth 0.25 of a dollar. And we need to keep this in mind because anytime you have a math money problem involving both dollars and cents, you typically, typically, excuse me, want to express your coin values in terms of dollars. All right, so for example, a dime would be worth a 0 0.10 of a dollar, a nickel is 0 0.05 of a dollar, and a penny is 0 0.01 of a dollar. Okay, so now that we understand this, we can go ahead and move on to solving the problem. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me help as many people as possible on YouTube. Now, my channel is all about trying to make math clear, understandable, and interesting. Also, I'm trying to encourage people that are having a tough time in math to never give up. So if you enjoyed this content, again, hit that subscribe button. And if you're gonna do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so now that we understand the question and we know a thing or two about uh, coins and currency in terms of dollars and cents, we can go ahead and work on a strategy to solve this problem. So I'm going to be using algebra to figure this out. All right, so algebra is awesome because we can let a variable like x represent an unknown value. Now, in this uh, problem, we don't need two variables, right? We don't need x to represent one thing and y to represent another thing. We can go ahead and just use one variable. Again, a variable like x represents a value. Okay, so we're trying to solve for how many dimes does a Ron have? Now, if we let X represent the number of quarters he has, well, he has three times as many dimes as quarters. So that means he has three times X. So let's go ahead and let X represent the number of quarters he has, and 3X will represent the number of dimes he has. So if we can figure out what X is, well, we can figure out how many dimes he has. So let's go ahead and specify that. Uh, like this. Okay, so we're going to let x equal the number of quarters Ron has and 3x will equal the number of dimes. So now, in order to solve this equation, or excuse me, in order to figure out what x is, we have to build an equation. And of course, you can see this equation right here because the number of quarters he has plus the number of dimes he has, uh, the monetary value of this is worth $2.20. Okay, so now we need to build uh, an algebraic equation to solve for x. 
Okay, so now that we know conceptually, though, that the quarters, the number of quarters, the value of that, plus the value of the number of dimes is going to be equal to this, well, this is not the equation we need to solve, right? Because we have to substitute uh, for quarters and dimes these expressions right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So when you are building an equation, building an equation in algebra, you first just want to model the big picture, right? So we know that uh, the value of his quarters and the value of his dimes is worth $2.20. But to how many quarters and dimes does he have? Well, he has X number of quarters and 3X number of dimes. So we're going to put an X right here for the quarters and 3X for the dimes. But again, we have to think about the value of these quarters and dimes. So this would not be the correct equation. X plus 3X is equal to 220. Now, a lot of uh, people would write this as their equation, but uh, this is wrong because X is the number of quarters and 3X is the number of dimes. It's not the monetary value, right? So how can we get the monetary value in terms of these quarters and dimes? Well, if we have one quarter, what's the value of that in terms of a dollar, right? So that would be one times 0.25. So to get the monetary value of the number of quarters and dimes that we have, we have to multiply. Again, we have $2.20, and let me, I'm kind of all over the place here with my thoughts, so let me kind of slow down. So here, this is $2.20. So uh, we are talking about dollars right here. This is $2.20. So we need to express the value of these uh, quarters and dimes in terms of a dollar. So that's why I kind of reviewed that with you earlier. So if we have one quarter, well, the monetary value of that is going to be one times 0.25, right, in terms of dollars. So we need to take that 0.25 and multiply it by the number of quarters and then add it uh, to the value of a dime, right, which of course is 0 0.10 of a dollar and multiply that by the number of dimes that we have. Now, this will give us the total monetary value of all of our quarters and dimes. And of course, we know this is equal to $2.20. All right, so if we can solve this equation for X, we can answer the question. All right, now that we know that this is the correct equation to solve for X, we can go ahead and just focus on the algebra. All right, so we are trying to solve for X. So we have 0.25X plus 0 0.10 times 3X is equal to 2.20. All right, so 0.25x is, of course, 0.25x plus, what we need to do here is multiply this 0 0.10 times this three, and that will be 0.3x. Okay, so these two things right here are like terms, so we can add the coefficients. And by the way, feel free to use a calculator here. So we have 0.25 plus 0.3, that's 0.55x. Okay, so now we have 0.55x is equal to 2.20. So to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 0.55. Okay, so 2.20 divided by 0.55 is going to be x is equal to 4. All right, now a lot of uh, people would be like, yay, I'm very smart, I solved the problem. But uh, remember, you got to go back and make sure you answer the correct problem, right? Or the correct, uh, you know, question. What was the question? Well, it is how many dimes does a Ron have? So what does X represent? Well, remember, X is the number of quarters, right? It's not the number of dimes. So uh, the number of quarters he has is four, but the number of dimes is going to be three times X, or three times four, which of course is 12 or 12 dimes. All right, so a lot going on here to solve a, a word problem like this. I don't think it's uh, complex, but uh, you certainly have to understand the process, right? You gotta know the problem, read the problem, really make sure you understand you know, all the information in the problem, but then build yourself a model. And of course, we are talking about algebra here. So in order to solve an algebra word problem, 
you need to establish your variables, set up an equation, solve that equation, and then make sure you understand uh, that you are answering the correct question. Okay, now the only way you are going to get better at solving word problems is through practicing. And I have a ton of videos like this on my YouTube channel. So make sure you go through those things if you want to improve in math word problems. But again, the key is to practice, practice, practice. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.